How to Survive Being Stranded on an Island with Your Frenemy, 101. First of all, to survive, understand the difference between a frenemy and a parasite. A parasite feeds on you without your knowledge, but a frenemy will openly use you until they don't need you anymore. Now, if you can't believe you're stranded on an island with your frenemy, accept that it is fate trying to teach you a lesson, how to become frenemies forever. When it is time to find food, don't underestimate your frenemy. If you think your frenemy isn't resourceful, just wait until you see them fashion a spear out of a coconut and use it to defend their secret stash of food. Agree to take turns hunting for food, but then sabotage your friend's hunting efforts. If you still haven't had success in catching food and you're getting bored, convince your frenemy that the island has a rare breed of cuddly and friendly animals that love to snuggle up with humans. Then sit back and watch as they unknowingly become a walking, talking teddy bear for the island's real inhabitants, the ferocious and deadly beasts that roam the jungle. You probably have regrets because now you're running away from these tigers. Don't worry that you're running away from tigers with your frenemy. You probably now realize that your differences don't matter as long as you can outrun your frenemy. After you survive the tiger attack, use your frenemy's habits as a distraction to sneak up on prey. Once you finally caught food, even after a week of being stuck on an island together, don't be surprised if your frenemy hasn't apologized for stealing your last piece of fruit. Now, when it's time to start making your tents before it gets dark, you'll realize making a tent with your frenemy is like trying to assemble IKEA furniture without instructions. It's gonna be a mess. But once the tent is made, it'll be like a sweater knitted with spaghetti. Messy, inefficient, and it ain't gonna keep you warm or dry. And if the tent doesn't hold up, you and your frenemy might have to resort to building separate tents, and the island you're stuck on is probably not big enough for the both of you. So you can make a game for you and your frenemy to see who can make the most luxurious tent. And then, when your frenemy isn't looking, remove their marker stone so they can't find you in their tent. Frenemies stranded on island, the ultimate test of friendship, or as we like to call it, the ultimate test of who can manipulate the other into building the better shelter. After all this tent making, you'll be surprised to find yourself saying, building a tent with a frenemy is actually making me miss my office job. At least there I had a separate cubicle to hide in. When your frenemy tells you they are convinced they can sense salt water like a desert-dwelling diviner, you'll probably start to think they're confusing hydration with hallucination. When your frenemy starts hallucinating on the island, it's not just the tropical heat, it's Wilson, the imaginary volleyball, making a cameo appearance. Just hope Wilson doesn't start giving them survival tips. After all, coconuts and volleyballs might have a secret alliance plotting against us. When you stumble upon a tiny oasis in the jungle, ensure that the water is safe to drink. Politely insist your frenemy take the first refreshing sip, exclaiming, After you! Then nonchalantly declare, Actually, I'm not that thirsty, and watch them with a knowing smile. If they survive a day without bowing to the porcelain god, even though there is no toilet on the island, congratulations, you've just confirmed the water is indeed safe. Now that it's getting cold and dark, you'll need to make a fire with your frenemy. If you want to know what it's like to make a fire with your frenemy, just imagine trying to light a candle in a hurricane. You could try to make a game out of it trying to find the most creative way to start a fire without using matches or lighters. But after spending a while playing the game, you've probably realized that you spent more time arguing about the best way to do it than actually getting the fire started. Making a game out of trying to find the most creative way to make a fire with your frenemy is like trying to dance with a porcupine. It's painful, and you're not really sure why you're doing it. Just accept the fact you're going to end up with burnt marshmallows and a damaged relationship, except you don't have any marshmallows. Ultimately, starting a fire will be where you find common ground. You both suck at starting fires. Well, now that you've failed making a fire with your frenemy, you should probably go and get a good night's rest. After all, you managed to convince your frenemy to make a luxurious tent for you, but first, you'll need to distract your frenemy. Tell them that the island is inhabited by a rare and valuable species of bird that only comes out at night. 
Explain that the locals believe it brings good luck to catch one, but it's extremely difficult. Then when they're out at night searching for the bird, sneak away and enjoy the peace and quiet without them. In the middle of the night, if you hear a lion's roar, relax. It's probably just your frenemy snoring too loudly. Well, good job. You've survived sleeping in your frenemy's tent. Next, you could play a game of truth or dare to pass the time and learn more about your frenemy's weaknesses. If there is a local tribe of cannibals, convince your frenemy that they are actually vegan and just happen to have a taste for human-shaped tofu. Then suggest that your frenemy go negotiate a peace treaty with them. It's time to get off the island before you perish, so make a boat. But do you know what's a great way to build a boat with your frenemy stranded on an island? Play a game of survival bingo. Just make sure to let your frenemy win, because what they don't know is that you've secretly sabotaged all the items they found. Ensuring that the boat you build together will ultimately be your creation is the ultimate frenemy power move. Now that your boat's finished, I recommend starting a dance-off to see who can dance the longest without stopping. When your frenemy is looking the other way, make sure you don't dance. This will wear your frenemy out, making them easier to deal with on the boat ride while preserving your own strength. Finally, how did the frenemies escape the island? They built a raft together, but only one of them made it out alive. The survivor wrote a book about the Rodale, The Art of Betrayal, the number one key to survive on a deserted island.